Thanks for stopping by, guys. Today we're going to talk about whole numbers and what happens if you divide them by a decimal. We're going to work through a couple example problems. I'm going to show you how to set it up, and we're going to discuss why your answers are actually going to get bigger. We'll have everything you need, and we're going to start with a whole number divided by a decimal. Make sure you look carefully at the steps. Step one is put the decimal at the end of the whole number. Step two is make the divisor a whole, and the way you do that is you just jump the decimal over. For this one, one it took one jump. For this one, it took one jump. For this one, it took one jump. And then step three is however many places you jumped the divisor, the number outside the house, you have to jump the you have to jump the decimal in the whole the same amount, or the decimal in the dividend. So you're going to jump this over one time. You don't have anything here, so you've got to put a zero as a placeholder. Same thing, nothing there. You've got to put a zero as a placeholder. Nothing there. You're going to have to put a zero as a placeholder, and now you just divide. You can always add as many zeros as you need within your dividend until you get rid of the problem where it ends. So let's look at the first one. So we now have not 0.7, but we have seven holes going into 56. So how many times can it go? Well, seven times zero gets me close to five because zero times seven is seven. I don't really have to put that if I don't want to, but I will bring down my six. Okay, now how many times can seven go into 56 without going over? It can go in there eight times. Eight times seven is 56. Subtract. Remember, if you have a zero up here or you have a number up here, you have to bring it down. And how many times can zero, or how many times can seven go into zero? Well, zero times. You subtract, you get nothing, you're done. And wherever your decimal ended in your dividend, it has to go to the same place in the quotient. So your final answer is just a plain old 80. Looking at the second problem, instead of 0.6 going into 426, we have 6 going into 4,260. How many times can 6 go into 4? Well, no times. I can put a 0, or I can just keep working. I say, okay, how many times can 6 go into 42? Well, I know that works out perfectly. It can go in 7 times, because 7 times 6 is 42. I subtract, I put 0, I bring down my 6. How many times can 6 go into 6? Well, that's easy enough. That's 1. 1 times 6 is 6. I subtract to get 0. And remember, if you have a number up here, you have to bring it down. How many times can 6 go into 0? Zero? 0 times, because 0 times 6 is 0. I have nothing left over, and your decimal where it's at in your dividend is just going to move up directly within your quotient. This next one, same process. How many times, because remember we had to move the decimals, how many times can 4 go into 5,840? 5, well, 4 can go into 5 one time, because 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract, bring down the 8. How many times can 4 go into 18? Well, it can go in there, how many times? 4 times? Yes, because 4 times 4 is 16. Subtract, bring down the 4. How many times can 4 go into 24? That works out good. That's 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract. Remember, if you have a 0 up here, you got to bring it down. How many times can 4 go into 0? Zero? 0 times. If I subtract, I have nothing left. I jump my decimal up. And that is how you divide a Whole number by a decimal. Follow those first four steps. Jump the decimal in the divisor, then jump at the same amount in the dividend, divide, and move your decimal.